what I'm going to be preaching on today. So listen to the words of this song, and the words of God. It says we have a Father. How many of you have a, know that you have a Heavenly Father that can be anything? Amen.
I put it on Facebook, but I want to tell you in person, thank you for all the work, labor that was done for all these kids. We ministered to close to 90 kids this week. I don't know where they was today. I guess we wore them out. But I think we had five today. <laughs> but they were, uh, we had close, not not at one time did we have 90. We had six in the 60s. But uh, close to 90 kids y'all got to minister to. Some of them never heard the gospel before. Some of them never been inside church before. Y'all hear me? They told me. We ain't never been in the church. We don't know what to do. And that was a blessing. This day you got to tell uh, the story of David and Goliath to some kids that never heard it before. Amen? Amen. You supported it. We paid, you paid for it. We tithes and offerings. Grand Bay Church of God helped us immensely. Amen. We're going to hopefully go over there and tell them how much we appreciate them. But you'll turn in your Bibles. I'm going to quote John 3.16. I want to say it's good to have Arthur. Amen. I haven't seen him in a while. Good to have you, Arthur. Miss Tara, we have a new sister in Christ. Amen. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all got a new sister. Amen. Amen. Right. She got adopted by the blood of Jesus right in that. We got a new family. We got us a new sister. Amen. And we didn't have her mother to mother, right? Her sister. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad it made the whole it was all worth it anyway. But when I seen that lady come down here in front of everybody. She didn't care who was watching. I'm going to tell you, they put a piece of iron in my back. Man. Praise Nothing. the Lord. But uh, anybody else, the lady here, I forgot her name. Good to have you too. We're going to help her out with a tent and some food. So uh, I don't know how much it took up the love offer, but whatever, we still got to buy the tent and pay for it. How many of us for that? Amen. Amen. We're going to help folks. Matter of fact, we only want to around here to want to. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see. <laughs> I didn't bring the glasses today. Uh -oh. John 3 16 says, For well, God so loved the world. Y'all know who that's talking about, right? Yeah. The Father. Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever Ain't you glad it said, hey, whosoever? Yeah. Ain't you glad it didn't say just white people? Yeah. Ain't I glad it didn't just say black people? Yeah. Ain't you glad it says, his spank, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord God shall be saved? Amen. Now, well, everybody ought to be able to quote that. But if you'll turn in your Bibles, who is the Father? Who is God the Father? If you ever get a hold of that, folks, it'll change your life like it did mine. One day I woke up minding my own business, spending some time in prayer, and just like a, I can't explain it, don't know, well, I do know why I ain't done it. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be in the ministry if it hadn't been for that morning. 1988, God spoke and told me, he said, I am your and you are my son. And I love you. The love that I felt is indescribable. I've never felt anything close to it Amen. in my life. Matter of fact, I asked him, I said, Father, you picked to kill me. But I mean, it felt like my heart was going to literally explode inside of me. The Father, the Father, Yahweh, God Almighty, I call him the ancient days. That's what Daniel called him in Daniel chapter 7. He said, I saw it. Nobody's ever seen the Father physically, but Daniel had a vision. Yeah. And he saw the Father. Y'all listen to me now. God Almighty, the ancient of days, he saw him sitting on his throne. And it says he brought before him, they brought before him one like unto the Son of Man. That's Jesus. Yeah. Daniel is the only person that's ever had this vision like this. He wasn't living. He had a vision. And he saw God the Father. And he saw Jesus. And what was happening 
at that moment was what Daniel was seeing was a prophecy a prophecy that would be fulfilled right here in about seven years about seven years of tribulation Jesus is fixed to come back and right here is where Jesus where Daniel saw the Father handing Jesus Christ a thousand year reign have a seat brother I'm not going to interrupt the service to feed you right now. We'll feed you after the service. But God Almighty wants us to know. He wants everybody in this church, Hope House, to know that you have, if you're saved. If you're not saved, you don't have a heavenly father. That's right. Right. You got. You may have an earthly father. A lot of these kids we bring in here, they don't know who their father is. Yep. They don't know who their daddy is. Where he's at? What, what a shame. But if you're saved today, the Bible says that you can call on the fathers. The Bible, Jesus told his disciples, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father. Amen. We're not supposed to pray to Jesus like yeah. that. Yeah. You can pray to Jesus, but Jesus said, this is the way you pray. Our Father, yeah. who art in yeah. heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, we ought to be worshiping God the Father first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. The Father. That's right. Jesus said, say, our Father. My every day I pray. The first thing I say, Father. Yeah. Father. I have a Father in heaven. And I I realize that I feel Him. I talk to Him. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I just saw Him. Yeah. Amen. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 says to and because ye are sons are you a son today? Amen. Are you a bastard? The Bible Paul said if you don't have the Father as your heavenly Father you're a bastard spiritually. And we don't like that word. It's uh, suppose I guess people think it's an ugly word. But what it means is, if you're saying, you know, in anger or something, it is bad. But a bastard is a child that don't know who his daddy is. Yeah. Yeah. And God said, Paul said, if you don't know your father, God Almighty, the ancient of days, then you are a bastard yeah. spiritually. You're without a father, heavenly father. And if you're without a heavenly father, you don't have his son either. That's right. I'm sorry. And his name ain't Allah. Yeah, his name ain't Buddha. Buddha. Ooh, so well, you know, whatever they call it. They're right. We talked last week about the, the, the 12 lost tribes and we destroyed that cult in about five minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did we destroy it? Word. 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 The name of that cult we talked about? Black years of life. Yeah, we destroyed it by the Word of God. <coughs> this book right here will, will destroy any cult that's, right. that's out there if you know what it says. And you right. know, it will destroy it because it, this book, the King James Bible, is Jesus Christ. It's the only thing we have physically that is Jesus. Yeah. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen. 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 And we have, what is it, what Paul say? Infallible proof yeah. that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. A lot of people are messed up today. But, but in 4, 6, it says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit Amen. of His sons, Son into your heart, crying, Abba, Abba Father. Father. Yeah. That's a personal thing that I say. I say it all the time. Yeah. I hope you do too. Yeah. It's like saying, Oh, Papa, Daddy. And we call our father, earthly father, daddy. It's the same. It's a personal relationship that we have with God the Father right. through His Son Jesus. See, what did Jesus come to earth to do? To reveal the Father. That's right. 
to show. He said, I came to show you the Father, what he's like. He came to show us what the character of the Father was. So when you see Jesus, you see the Father. Not the same person now. Two persons. But God, you can be seen. Well, I, I had been in a service that I wasn't preaching in a while, but I can promise you when somebody was preaching on the Heavenly Father and the blood of Jesus, they had to make room for me. And I'm going to make some noise, and I'm going to maybe run or do something. Somebody would think I was crazy. But when people start talking about my Heavenly Father, there's just something inside of me that just wiggles. Yeah. It's that part of me, God, that God made. It's a void that God can only feel in your life. It's, we're all born with it. It's a, yeah. a little empty space. Yeah. And the only person that can feel that is God. Yeah. He created us that way. And we're never going to have peace. You're never going to have joy. I'm talking about real joy. You're never going to have true joy and peace until God fills that void in your life. Yeah. Not only that, if you reject that person, you'll spend eternity in the devil's hell yeah. Amen. with Mohammed, Amen. with Buddha, with all these false prophets, Joseph Smith. Uh, I seen a Christian the other day posting that they supported the Mormon Faith. How can you support the Mormon faith if you're born again, supposed yeah. to be a born again Christian? Yeah. Ain't happen. They don't believe yeah. Jesus is God. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to support that? Yeah. Oh, we need to draw a line in the sand. Yeah. We talked about it. We had one of the best Sunday school classes we ever had today. Thank you, Brother Bill Bo, just for letting the Holy Ghost move. Yeah. You, if you ain't come to Sunday school, you miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's in here or back there, whatever. But God wants to fill that void in your life. There's no way that I can stand up here, Jarvis, and explain to you what that feels like. But I can try. It, it, it helps me to know that even though this world is falling apart, I'm talking about literally falling to pieces, just like the Bible said it would. Just as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, Jesus said, so shall it be also in the day of the Son of Man. But because I have a heavenly Father, yes, I ain't scared. Yeah, I'm concerned about what's going on. But I'm not scared. You know why? He gave me peace. Yeah. This thing, it's fixed to blow up any day now. When, we, when you have governments, Germany, I mentioned this in Sunday school. Germany and some of the European countries have passed a law that it is now okay to commit pedophilia and bestiality. Brother Philip, me and you are the two oldest guys in here. Somebody never told me, even five years ago, that a government would say that's okay. Yeah. I'd say it never happened. It's happened. You know where it's coming to? America. It's coming. It's it's already here, but when it, when they pass laws like they've already passed, that it's okay to murder a baby, that it's okay to be a queer and marry a we do we do an injustice when we call them gay and homosexual. We need to call them what they are queer. Yeah. That's not normal. Right. The Bible says it's unnatural. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, so when we start allowing, I love them. I don't want them to go to hell. You know, we had 50 of them killed, 49 slaughtered. Somebody said, well, that wasn't God. He didn't have nothing to do with that. God didn't have nothing to do with it. God, let me tell you something. God has something to do with everything that happens. Yeah. He either allows it or he stops it. Yeah. The Bible declares that God has, that he looks on the affairs of men. He knows everything that's going on. God allows that to happen. Yeah. 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 You can mark that. Well, God ain't God of wrath. Yes, he is. Amen. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's a God of love and mercy first. Yeah. But when you reject that, then you're going to see his wrath. Right. Amen? Amen. Thank God that I ain't got to face the wrath of God. It's coming. Yeah. The Bible tells me in Romans chapter 1 that the wrath of God is fixed to be revealed from heaven. Against all ungodliness, not just homosexuality, all ungodliness yeah. and uncleanness and filthiness. This needs to be revealed from heaven. People that are not saved, that are not born again, if you're here today and you've never, ever, or you're not saved, you know what you're saved or not. I can tell you right now, you know that. Yeah. Unless you've been lied to and somebody said, well, you're eternally secure or some trash. That, well, you can live any way you want to as long as you said, I, uh, Jesus, I love you. A lot of people say, I love God, but they lost. They're going to wear hell. Yeah. Amen. Make sure, hope I, that you don't leave this building today without knowing who your Heavenly Father is. Right. He knows His own. He knows that I'm his son. And when, you, when you're when you living right, you know it too. Amen. What? I want to talk to you today. Who is this God the Father? I'm going to talk about four things. Who is this God the Father? What is he like? Y'all want to know what he's like? Yeah. What does he love? If I want to know what God likes. Yeah, <laughs> right. me too. And what does he hate? Well, God don't hate nothing. Yes, he does. Yeah. yeah. See, a lot of people, I've heard, there's preachers that stand up and say, God loves everybody and loves everything. That's a dog-faced lie, yeah. according to my Bible. Yeah. What does God love and what does he hate? Y'all want to know what he hates? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't want to be part of nothing God hates. Amen. Yeah. But I want to be part of something God loves. Yes. See y'all? Yeah. I'm not to say amen unless you don't want me or something. It's Father's Day. I'm going to let you out early today. But I want to know what God loves to me. Come on now. And I want to know what He hates. I'm, gonna show you. I'm not going to show you all of it, just some of it. Come on now. What does He, number three, that love and hate come to number two, both of them. Number three, what does He demand from us? Well, God don't demand that. Oh, yes, He does. Yeah. Okay. He demands it. He demands it. Right. If He don't get it, you're going to be separated from God. Yeah. He offers a love gift. He's justified. He offers the greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind. Christianity, true biblical Christianity, is the only religion on the planet that's in history of the world that the God of that religion gave his life. Yeah. Yeah. All the others, you got to take life or you know, the Islam, they kill people. Yeah. But Jesus yeah. gave his life yeah. and we're seeing a very, very big dividing line. We're seeing what it's all about. We're going to kill you if you don't believe what we believe. The Quran tells them to kill. Jesus said, Love your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? And he gave his life on the cross, hanging there. He said, Father, forgive them. He's hanging on the cross. He's been cursed. He became a curse for us. He became the curse. Cursed is every man to hang upon the tree, God said. He put his own son, God Almighty, put his own son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, allowed him to be crushed. Yeah, that's right. And Isaiah 53 said he was bruised. Yeah. And it, proved, it pleased the Father that his own son was crushed. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because God loved humanity. Yeah. He didn't have to crush us no more unless... How would you feel, Brother Bilbo, if somebody, if your son gave his life to somebody and they spit on his grave? Yeah. Uh -huh. How would you like it if some, your son stepped in front of a bullet for somebody and took, they got, he got killed instead of them, and then you saw that person go, 
You'd be mad, wouldn't you? I would too. I'd be mad. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Don't get caught spitting on the grave. I ain't no, there's a grave with Jesus, but he ain't there. Hallelujah. That's the difference between our faith and all this other garbage out there. Yeah. Our God's still alive. Yeah. He proved who he was by raising up on the third day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Seen by all the five people. Right. Historical fact. What did I where did I stop? Right there. Where, verse 7. Wherefore, because of what happened, thou art no more a servant, but a son. Yeah. And if a son do an heir of God through right. Christ. Right. I'm an heir. That's right. Woo, me, I'm to inherit some stuff. Yeah. Hey. I, oh, I, don't, I, I have not seen, and ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Amen. I mean, that, that don't excite John. Come on. Woo, it ain't, we ain't talking about Christmas. Come on. But we ought to be like kids. Back when I was a kid growing up, man, Christmas morning, I couldn't wait for the guy to get the bicycle, a BB gun, whatever, man. Yeah. For yeah. two months, yeah. Arthur, yeah. I was, woo, I can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> Why ain't we that way about it? Come on, Come on, Come on I, I am. I'm excited. I'm pleased to go home. Yeah. I, I, I hope I ain't gonna die. If I do, I'm gonna go. But I believe I'm pleased to go home. Come on. In a moment. Yeah. Twinkling on I, I, I've been looking for it any day. Man, I'm gonna be excited. Come on. Yeah. I need some excitement in this church. Woo. What is this God like? Number one. Number one, He is love. Yeah. God is love. First John 4, 6. He right. loved us first. The Bible says because we didn't love God first, but then He loved us first. Right. You don't have an excuse not to love God because He proved His love for us by sending His Son. That's right. How did God prove He loved us? God always proves everything. He, pro he proves what He says in that book. He proves to us when He sent His Son to give His life on the cross. And Jesus said, this is my blood. God demanded blood. But not man's blood. He demanded the blood of God. Yes. If Jesus was God, if Jesus wasn't God, we're all going to die in our sins. But because Jesus Christ was God walking on the planet, wrapped in a robe of flesh, that blood come out of Him, supernatural blood of God. When you put your faith in that blood, your sins are not only forgiven, they're washed away. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. He is love. Romans 5, verse 8 said, God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God the Father commended his love while I was a filthy, rock, dirty, slimy, mean, drunkard, cussing, crazy, sinful. Yeah. Still love. Thank you, Lord. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People still look at me today, 40 years later, and I can't believe. Yeah. You. Let's just remember what happened the first 24 years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. Right. 40 years later. That's right. Still go. Right. God kept me. You know why? Because I wanted to be kept. Yeah. Right. Yes, exactly. Woo, I fell in love with Jesus. And then Jesus introduced me to the Father. Y'all know that's in the Bible that Jesus said, I will introduce you to my Father. And we we will we will come to you. Y'all ever feel that when you pray? 
Woo, sometimes I'm praying, I feel like God, the Father's over here, the Son's over here, and we just have a good old time. Woo, he just bathes me right. in his presence. That right. uh, renews me day by day, the Bible says. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to get saved before yeah. I got saved. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to come with no works. Well, God, I've been working for, I've been knocking on doors. Now, will you save me? No. Nope. I came to him just like I was. That old song said, just as I am without one plea. Yes. But that thy blood was shed for me. That's right. Yes. Just as I was 40 years ago. Yes. Save me. Brought me up out of a horrible, filthy slap. That's why I can't look down on nobody. Yes. I can't look down on nobody. That's right. Sometimes I want to say, oh, man, I'll get it. Yeah. We've had, I've had people that's got saved at least 50 times. <laughs> yeah. right. yeah. I said, Lord. He said, well, yeah. Yeah. you know where you come from? Yeah. I said, God's hands. Right. He don't deal with it. That's right. God, just as I was, God commended his love. In other words, he gave it. God is good. Why? Because He loves us. Yeah. Woo! I'm out of heaven. I love my heavenly Father. I don't know about yeah. Woo, man. He said it. He cares about He loves us and He cares about all of our needs. All of them. He loves us. Number two. No, number two B. No, I ain't through with A yet. He loves righteousness. That's right. Psalms 33, 5 said, God loves righteousness. He likes it when we're living separated from the world. He loves that. And that's why I'm going to do my best to stay separated and clean. The Bible said, God loves righteousness and hates evil. Yes. Mm. Caring about all our needs. Turn to Matthew 10. We're talking about the Father, man. Matthew 10, verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a party? That's not very much money. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your Father. In other words, he knows about it. That guy, that preacher said that God didn't have nothing to do with what happened in Orlando. He's full of something. Yeah, he did have, he does know what's going on. He don't, uh, a sparrow, it says right here. We're going to read. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. I probably lost some since yesterday. He still knows how. That ain't just put there just so. He knows how many hairs I got. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think that's pretty uh, omnipotent, yeah. omnipresent, yeah. all knowing, yeah. all seeing, yeah. all understanding, yeah. eternal. God knows everything yes. about us. Verse uh, 31 says, Fear ye not, therefore, you are more value, you are of more value than many Praise the Lord. He loves us. Yes. We're His creation. There's only one creature on this planet that was created in the image of God. You want to know why we're having all this transgender crap and all this other stuff, homosexuality, the devil trying to confuse people about who we are. Yeah, right. God created us male and female. Yeah. And he said, let a husband, let the man leave his mama and daddy and be joined to his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Not let Leroy be joined to Billy Roy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not, not Adam and Steve, but Adam and Eve. Yeah. Amen. The devil has done a good job of confusing the human race. Yeah. Now we got children 
that are copying their parents, they want to be, well, I'm born a boy, but I want to be a girl. Where's that coming from? Out of the deepest, darkest pit of hell. Where adults are causing their children. Well, I'm telling you, we're in trouble. Yes. <clears throat> yes. We need to get away from this transgender mess and get transformed yeah. by the renewing of our mind. That's right. Where was I? Pharaohs. I'm through with that. Philippians 419, what else does God love? A cheerful giver? Yeah. Y'all know that? Yeah. I got a bunch of cheerful givers in here. Y'all didn't hear me. Yeah. yeah. I got a bunch of cheerful givers. I see y'all giving every Sunday. Some of you just grin when you write that check. Or you put that much like, man, I love you. I heard somebody say, I think Miss Day, she got a job. She said, first day I heard her say, I'm so glad I got a job. Now I can pay tithes. Yeah. I don't forget stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, she didn't say so I could buy me a new car. She said so I could start paying tithes. Amen. That's cheerful. Yeah. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Yeah. I don't forget hearing stuff like that, see. I don't think I've ever heard that before in my life. Philippians 4, 19 said, God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. My God, he said, yeah. my Father yeah. shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. That's right. And he got a bunch of them. Yes. God ain't running short on gold. No. That's right. That's God, right. I said, God ain't, there's no shortage of gold in heaven. There ain't no financial collapse in heaven. That's right. That's right. Streets are paved with gold. Uh, I've heard people's testimony that went to heaven and they died. And they said the first thing that was most important, he said, the way they described it, I never thought about it, is transparent. Yeah. Solid gold, but transparent. Yeah. Wow. You can't make stuff like this up, these people say. Some of these people saw heaven. Some of us saw hell too. Yeah. Yeah. Hell's an awful place, folks. Full. Hell is. The Bible says, I believe in the latter days, God, hell is going to have to enlarge itself. Yeah. So many people have rejected God and rejected His Son, Jesus Christ. Hell is going to, when these things start hitting in the tribulation period, Millions, thousands, and millions of people are going to be going into hell. What does God hate? What does God hate? Psalms chapter 5, verse 5 says, God hates all workers of God hates all workers of iniquity. Somebody tell me what a worker of iniquity is. Somebody get paid for pornographers. Yeah. They go burn in hell. They destroy other people's lives with sell by selling pornography. Hello? Yeah. Are y'all yeah. are y'all living in America? Yeah. America's full of pornography. Yes. Yeah. Those people that are creating that put it in children's. Yeah. Why do we have pedophiles? Why have we got homosexual? Why have we got all this perversion? I'll tell you why. Because pornography. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Bible says it's a por it's fornication. No. Drug dealers. Sex slave. These people that sell. We got women all over America that are being kidnapped. Yes. Drug and dope. And being sold. Then people are workers of iniquity. Yes. God said, I hate them. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know God hated nobody. You don't love the body. Right. I've had people arguing with me about that, and I just told them to solve five five. Okay. <laughs> That's just in more places than that. I'm not going to read them all. Yeah. God hates sin. Yeah. Yeah. He hates sin and he offers a remedy for him. That's right. yeah. You better grab a hold of it. You ain't got that remedy. You ain't been given a blood shot. You better be given right. right. It's the only cure for iniquity is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
Proverbs 6. We're going to read this. This is one of the most sobering group, uh, uh, portions of Scripture, I believe, in the whole Bible. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 says, These six things that the Lord hate. Y'all see that word hate? There is some things, and especially six of them, that God hates. Look what it says. A proud look. Ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. Bad. And I'm beautiful. Well, I'm fine. Ladies, you got the wrong kind of pride about the way you look. Yes. You want to show too much of it? Yeah, come on, brother dear. You got a proud look. Yeah. If you're so proud of your body, you want other men to see it beside your husband. There ain't one place anybody ought to be seeing your beauty is in the bedroom. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, brother. If you yeah. like it when men look at you, go. Know, you're going to hell. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I'm just telling you what God. If God hates it. It ain't just about being ba a bad man. It's, it's a lot of forms of pride. Yeah. One, one form of pride is rejecting God's love gift. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. need God. That's yeah, what yeah. Americans do. We don't need God anymore. Let's get rid of it. God hates that. God, I've told y'all this before. I'm going to probably tell you every Sunday to the house. God's wrath. We just seen the tip of the iceberg the other day. 50 people gone. That's the tip of the iceberg of what's coming. Do I say that gladly? No, I don't. I sat and grieved. I prayed for the families. And what I prayed was, God, let this thing that's happening not just be those souls that are lost and probably all up in hell, but let it speak to our country. Let it speak. Sin, I pray this way. God yes. send judgment that we might repent. Yes, amen. But if God don't send judgment, we just don't keep right on going. Yeah. Yes, that's right. If there wasn't no hell, would you be living right? Yeah. Paul said, if it's all there is just being a Christian, I'm of all men most miserable. Yeah, most, yeah. Paul That's said, right, there's yeah. more to it than just this life. Yeah. 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 Paul said, yeah. I would just be a Christian on earth and then nothing. Yeah. After that, just, we're, we're just whatever. Yeah. On the toes. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I don't need But he said, yeah. I have not seen. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Proud look. A lying tongue. God hates people that tell lies. You know why? Because it damns souls to hell. Yeah. Now, there's many a preacher sitting behind a pulpit right now. Well, they didn't go home. <laughs> they sit behind a pulpit and tell people it's all right. God's love, His grace, and mercy, is all, it covers everything. Don't worry about living right. You can live like the devil and still go to hell. You're eternally secure. You don't have to worry about losing. Lies. On, Lies. A lying tongue. God hates that. You know why? There's a many a soul going to bust hell wide open because some preacher said and they didn't search the scriptures for themselves. Brother, I have searched that doctrine myself. And I know that it's a lie. But many a soul is going to cross over into a devil's hell because they listen to some lying prophet. Tell them. Oh, no. He would never send nobody to hell. He don't send you. You go there. You choose to go to hell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not obeying him. What Jesus said, except you obey my commandments. Oh. He hates. He hates lying. He hates. Hands that shed innocent blood. Yes. You lay your hand on a child. You molest a child. God hates your hands and everything connected to them. Yeah. These abortion doctors, I don't want to be on there. I do not want to be in the shoe or barefoot. When they stand before God, they ain't going to have the shoes on. Yeah. 
I don't want to be one of them guys that's murdered babies. In America, 60 million of them. I've told y'all this before, I'll tell you again. We don't have to pay back them 60 million. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to pay it back. How's that going to happen? I'll let God be the judge of that. But 60 million babies slaughtered. Probably more than that. God knows every last one of them. 60 million babies have been murdered by men to take these babies out of the mother's womb and kill them. Or stick a needle in the back of their head, suck their brains out. I know that sounds bad. We need a we need a shaking in this country. We need some people that'll wake up and say, man, that, that's not right. And say something about it. Say something! Get on Facebook! Quit, quit wasting your time on Facebook telling people how good they look. And quit putting your picture on there want people to tell you how good you look. That's right. Tell them what the Word says about how they look. Yeah. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I want to know. Right, uh, what does God think about me? Yes. I'm real concerned about that every day. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Just, just thinking of evil. Thinking of what they can contrive to destroy people's lives. There are people that men are creating today. They got this virtual reality, folks. It's, I saw it a long time ago come on the market. But now it's fixed to be produced in mass virtual reality. Look for it. And we may not be here when really cold. You put on a helmet. Got it, but it's supposed to be mass produced where you can fantasize, you can punch a button and tell it what you want to fantasize about. You want to kill somebody, you want to have sex with somebody, you want to do something wicked, you can punch a button and you'll be just like you was actually doing it. Folks, that's the devil's technology. Yes, it is. Humankind can this this time, we've been invaded. This country and this world is being invaded. By fallen angel technology, they're already pumping it into our television sets. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. well, I don't yeah. believe it. I don't care what you believe or not. I'm telling you what's the fact. This thing is blowing. It's, it's like we got our heads stuck in the sand, and the devil is pumping stuff right into our children's mouths. Destroying. This danger since you had a group of kids that never heard about David and Goliath. But I guarantee you they heard about Hocus Pocus, man. Yeah. Whatever that is. And some of this crap that comes out of the television. Listen to me. Hollywood hates your kids. Because yeah. Hollywood is controlled by the devil. Yeah. You yes, can is. mark that thing. God. Our Father hates this kind of stuff. You let your child sit in front of a television feeding them. If you don't think God didn't send us a sign last week about that alligator, yeah. we talked about it in Sunday school. I'm going to talk about it again. That was a sign to America about Disney World. Yeah. In my soul, I know it. That little boy, two years old, playing in Disney World in a place that's supposed to be protective of kids. But guess what? He's playing in the dark. Darkness. Disney World is becoming a place of darkness for your children. Yeah, come on, brother I don't believe that. Like I said, I don't really care whether you believe it or not. I'm going to tell you what God put in my soul. That baby was taken by an alligator in darkness. His parents were stupid. We're loud. If it had been daylight, that's one thing. If I'm standing right there beside the child, that's one thing. But to let your child play in two feet of water in the nighttime, when you know they're delegated out there in that river. Yeah. For my part, they need to go to jail. Yes. That's the way I feel about it. They wasn't watching their child. Are you watching yours? Yeah. Oh, you better be careful about your children. And one thing I know that God hates is when we allow our children to be hurt when we can stop it. That's right. My granddaughter's ten, almost 10 years old. I watch everything she watches like a 
I see something on her. I said, what is that? Yeah. She got to tell me. I want to know what it's about. Oh, you better be watching your children. That's right. That's right. You better be watching. Because one day you're going to stand before God. Not only are you going to answer for yourself, you're going to answer for your children. If your children go to hell because you didn't watch them, you think God's going to say, well, enter into the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Even though you didn't watch your children, you let them go to hell. Listen to me. I think your heart's right with God. You're going to be sensitive yeah. to what your children watch. Yeah. Yes, You're going to be sensitive to who they're going to spend the night with. Yes. My, my granddaughter is not going to spend the night with nobody that ain't saved and full of the Holy Ghost. Right. Ain't happening. Not that. My granddaughter, whoo, last week, I'm going to give you an example. We have to, up till now, we ain't doing it no more. We have to let Daddy go spend a couple hours of every few weeks with her mama. Her mama took her up to Cedar Creek told us she was taking her to Presley Valley. See, the creek's blowing 40 miles an hour. Yeah. Took my granddaughter to see the creek, and when Natalie come home, her fingers were raw on the end from holding on to the sand and getting swept away. And her mama was drinking alcohol in front of her. Ain't happening no more. I said, I'll sell my house. I'll do whatever I got. We're not sure. Now! Spend another day with that woman. Unless they got uh, I'm telling y'all a little personal history. She'll never get my granddaughter again. Unless the judge said, then he's going to have a fight in his hands. Oh, we, you better watch your children. Right. It's dark out there. There's a lake out there full of devils. It's just yeah, wait. Yeah. That alligator grabbed that baby and drowned in it. Before it realized it wasn't a dog or a cat. Alligators don't normally attack people. They attack a cat or a dog. That alligator couldn't see either. He grabbed that the baby and grabbed it. He let the baby go. After it was too late, he grabbed it. He realized it wasn't a because alligator, they bury their prey in a, in a nest and let it rot. And then they they don't need it. I may be gross to you, but I think sometimes we need to get a little bit of it. Yeah. We watch blood and guts on television. Yeah. We watch people getting their brain blown out. But yet when the preacher says something a little bit, oh, we got up there, oh, let's leave. Yeah. But yet we'll sit in front of a stake of television and watch all kind of gore. And all the dead, dead out of the pit of hell. Yeah. And watch all this crap on television. But yet the preacher can't hardly get he can't say crap. He can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's some crap out there, folks. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I told my wife I was going to preach quick today, but I'm going to put that failing miserably. False witness. A false witness, a, a beat that are swift to run into mischief. Well, yeah, we know what that is. Oh, do you know what so and so does? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, they run to find out something to gossip about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mischief. A false witness is speaking lies, and he that soweth discard among the brethren. Notice that verse says, Six things doth the Lord hate, but the seventh one's an abomination. Yeah. You sow discard in this church. I said, If you sow discard in this church. God hates that. Yeah. Yeah. According to what I'm reading, He hates you. Yeah. Yeah. Until you repent. Listen, when you sow discord in a body of believer, you're destroying souls. Yeah. Yes. Possibly. Hopefully, this church is strong enough, and I think we are a tight-knit, strong group of Christians that have faith like I've never seen before. Amen. Amen. But we better not take that for granted. We better, matter of fact, we better tighten the ranks. That's right, brother. Yeah. Brother, on, brother Keenan ain't that yeah. afraid that he was in the army. We ain't better tighten the ranks. We still gonna reach out and try to get some. 
We're going to still be running buses to pick up kids. We still going to hope mamas get saved. We hope, we're going to hope some daddies get saved. But we better tighten our ranks. We better not relax. That's right. Those children of Israel day when they relaxed the camp, guess what happened? Those in the back got swore. The devil and the enemy came and killed them. Right. Took them captive. We can't slack up, old pal. That's right. I know it's Father's Day and y'all are coming here a good sweet message. But... Come on now. What does God demand? Number three. Come on. What does He demand? Number one. He demands that we love His Son. Yeah. 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 God the Father demands that you love His Son, Jesus Christ. I, you know, if somebody don't like my son, they don't like me. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You ain't gonna come bad about my son. Yeah. I'm old with like, but I still pack a punch. <laughs> you ain't gonna bad about my son and right. get away with it. Yeah. That brother Bill Bow is that the way you feel about your son today. He might not be saved. Well, I know one of them is, but brother Mark Davis, if somebody said, I eat and it's just a fast. If he ain't. But I'm just saying, it ain't gonna make something rise up in you. Yes, it Why? Will. Because he's your son. Yeah, that's right. And he ain't not for nobody yet. Yeah. Brother Akil, ooh, I know what will happen. Nobody said that to us. Kind of. Ooh, man, you better rise up or your pastor will have to do the part. <laughs> you better love God's son. Yeah. That's right. right. Because the one, he's the one that said, Father, I'll go. Yeah. Yes, I don't know when it happened. All I know is that the Bible said, Paul said, before the foundation of the world, before Adam and Eve was even created, God knew That's right. that he was going to create man. He knew that man was going to have a free moral agent, be a free moral agent to choose good and bad. But he also knew there was a devil, a fallen angel that was going to hate what he created. Yes, that's right. Whether you know it or not, we're the sons of God. We're replacing that fallen angel. Amen. Those fallen angels that fell, that's what we're going to replace. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I ain't never heard that before. You don't go to Hope House, man. You go to Hope House, you've heard that before. That's what I firmly believe. That every born again child of God, the reason we get called the Son of God is the same reason that God called the angels us. Son, that's right. Jesus even said you're going to be like the angels. What's that? We're taking it away. They don't like it. The Lucifer didn't like it. He wants to wipe out the human race. What do you think is happening in the world today? ISIS wants to destroy yes. the human race. Yes. Why? Right. Who's responsible for Jesus? Israel. Who's everybody want to see destroyed? Israel. Why? Because they're responsible for Jesus. Yeah. Look. Better love his son, John 14. Quickly. Amen. 14 21 says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Y'all see that? And he that loveth me shall be loved of my. Capital F. The Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Verse 23 says, look at this. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words and my Father will love him. There's conditions on God's love, folks. But some people don't believe that. It's unconditional, but it's also conditional. Yeah. You don't you don't love the son? My father will love him and we 
Notice that W E. We will. Mm. I don't know how to want to get around that kind of stuff. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. Number three. Number three, huh? You gotta love your son. Number, number two in that part is you gotta love each other. First John 14, 21. Notice John 14, 21 and first John. First John 14, 21. What does it say? 421, I'm sorry. 421. And this is commandment have we from him. That he who loveth God love his brother also. It don't matter if you're black, white, green, purple, yellow. It don't matter if you're homosexual. It don't matter if you're fornicator. I'm supposed to love you. Sometimes that's hard. I've had to pray over that. God help me. You said love them. I'm going to love them. I'm going to pray for them. God, I hate what they do. Let me know you know you better love what God loves and hate what he hates. Right. Love your brother, Hope House. Reach out to your brother. We're reaching out to a lady today. That's love. Yeah. You bought her a tent. Amen. That's love. Yeah. Guess what? That's reaching outside these four walls. Yeah. The church ain't here. It's out there. Yeah. We meet here, but we go out there and we help people that are hungry. We feed a lot of people. We got a big food pantry back there. We, we buy tents. All we ask them to do is come here to work one night. Hope it. Yeah. Pray it. But you can't just love people and say, well, we can't do that for you. You know, God is love. Uh, you know, whatever. That's, that's the church today. Hogwash. Yeah. wash. Yeah. And that's what that is. Love your son. Love your brothers. Be holy. Yes. First Peter chapter one verse sixteen through twenty. Quickly, because he is written, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." And if you call on the Father, who without respect to person judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with the corruptible thing, the silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your earthly fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who barely was foreordained. I just said this a while ago. Before the foundation of the world was, but, but was manifest in these last times for you. Before the world was created. Yeah. Jesus said, Father, I'll go. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. I'll do it. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Hello. That's why you better love the Son. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 14 said, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. Y'all hear that? I didn't right. refer to it, I quoted it. Hebrews 12, 14 said, Follow peace with all men and holiness. Yeah. With all men, without which, in other words, without holiness, you're not going to heaven. Yeah. Last time I checked, that's where God is. Amen. Yeah. You're not going to see God yeah. unless you live in a holy life. Right. Let me say that again. You ain't going to see God unless you live in a holy life. And the only way you can live holy is through the blood of Jesus Christ. This weak preacher right here, I get up every morning, I plead the blood of Jesus. I go to bed at night, I plead the blood. I gotta have the blood. You gotta have the blood. I gotta have it. I can't make it, Roger, without the blood. It does something to me. It's supernatural blood. Thank you, Lord. Every time I plead the blood, it's like I get another shot. Woo! Glory to God. Come on, man. Like I've been pumping spiritual air. <laughs> Plead the blood. Don't you ever get tired. Plead the blood. And that's the only way you're going to make it to hell. Right. It's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's, right. that's the way God the Father planted. And that, by golly, 
that's the way it's got to be. It can't be no other way. We can try to go around in tradition, you know, all that mess, but it's got to be through the blood of the Lamb. Put your faith in that blood, and you're going to rot in hell. That's me, man. You know why I say those things? Because I love you. But sometimes that's the only thing. You know, when I was mean, these lollipop preachers made me more cute. When I was before I got saved, but there was one guy who looked at me one day and stuck his finger in my face. He didn't know me. He just looked. I told him I didn't know nothing about God. He said, you're going to hell if you don't give your life to Jesus. He stuck that finger there. I could have whipped him, but I didn't. You know what? It shook me. These other people said, we got to go to church. Tomorrow we get drunk and we got to get something before church. Bye-bye. That's why I lost my faith in church. Because I live with my cousins and all. That's what they believe. I said, man, is this what it's about? Mm-hmm. They it ain't no better than I am. Yeah. They, matter of fact, some of them worse. Yeah. they put on a mask on Sunday morning. Yeah. Go to church and come home and take it off. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't wear no mask. I just, you get what you got. This is it. I'm a sinner. I'm a rotten. I'm filthy. Yeah. One day, though. I met the man with a plan. I said I met the man with a plan in his hand. Father, it was the father's plan, and he gave it to his son's hand, and his son's hand hung on the cross. That was God's plan. It is God's plan for everybody in this room. I hope to God none of us get left behind. I hope to God none of you have to go to a devil's head. That's the only reason I do what I do. I don't get up here because I think I'm good looking. We all know that ain't true. I get up here because I don't want to see nobody off the root off. I don't want you to go to hell. Brother Dimitri, I want you to stay saved. Ma'am, I don't want you to go to hell. If you don't get saved and born again, you'll go to hell. You won't hear that church down the road. But they won't give you a penny. Y'all, y'all with me on that? Uh-oh. We didn't take a vote or whatever. Uh-oh. It's unanimous. Uh-huh. God said it. I said it. Come on, man. It's, it's unanimous because God said it. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Separation. What does God demand? He demands that you separate yourself from this world. Right. Yes. If you don't separate, I don't care. If you could live right, live hanging out with your buddies, your old friends, I don't care if you could. God said, no. don't do it. He said, come out from a mile and be separate, said the brother Gary. No. He said, say it the Lord yeah. and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father. Come on, man. A father. In other words, if you don't separate yourself, you ain't got a heavenly father. Right. He wants you to come out of there. Right. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Separate. Yeah. He didn't ask that. Would y'all please, if, if you don't have sex, y'all was apple car, would y'all separate yourself? No. No. I don't want to make y'all mad. <laughs> he said, no. Come. Come out. Yeah. Say it, the Lord. I'll receive you. What if you don't come out? You still don't receive it? I'll be a father. You'll have a heavenly father. I'm almost through. I know somebody is wanting to hurry up. Separation. Number five, the last one in three. said, worship. God demands that you worship him. He told a lady at the well, the father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and it's true. true. Okay. Yeah. This ain't worse. Right. Unless it's in here. Yeah. You can hold your hands up till uh, next Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. But if it ain't coming from in here, it's fake. Yeah. Yeah. God demands that we worship Him because He's worthy. Yeah. He is worthy. Yes. He's worthy. Yeah. I'm about to help. God is worthy. Yeah. Yeah. 
It demands that we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not, not looking around. I see people. Everybody looking at me now worshiping? No, you ain't. You're faith. God ain't even seeing it. He, 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 he turned his head away. God knows what he really does. Come on now. We get down to brass tacks. Woo! Worship. Number four, the last. What must I do, Brother Gary, to know that I have the Heavenly Father as my Father? Just do them in reverse. What we just talked about, just turn it around. Number one, worship Him. Number two, be separate. Number three, be holy. Number four, love Jesus and honor Him. Number five, love each other. Number six, hate sin and unrighteousness and hate evil and love righteousness. Yeah. Number last one, be a cheerful giver. Amen. Not just with money. Stand in feet. I did make it. I'm trying. Hard for me to get under now. Be a cheerful giver, not just with your money. Some of you gave this week of your time. Amen. Thank you, Miss Daisy and Mark Liz. Thank you, Miss Tiffany. Thank you, Tatura. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you did. You gave your time. You, it's easy to give money, Bob. But it's a whole different ball game to give your time. A whole different thing. I wore out from it. Yeah. I mean, I, it's been a long time since I drove buses. <laughs> it wears you out all that hollering. Making sure you ain't got nobody going to fall off the bus. Or make sure you can see the traffic. It, it, it's kind of nerve wracking. Because yeah. you're responsible for all that. Yeah. It wears you out. I forgot what it was like. I told my wife, I said, I forgot. I've done it for 35 years. God. Thank you for driving the bus. Part of this, thank you. How many others get involved? We ought to have two week drivers. We have to swap off. Yeah. I, I just said it, I mean, God will represent you. I said we ought to have more drivers than what we can put on the bus out there. I'll go. Now, they might not want you to drive every Sunday. Once in a while, we ought to give these guys a Sunday off. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them come to church. Yeah. Sometimes I like to do that. Just give them a Sunday off. I'll drive for you this week. I'll ride the bus and make sure them kids ain't knocking the windows out. Yeah. <laughs> it takes time. Oh, a little bit of sacrifice. But my Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body in the sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Come on, Brother Gary. Reach your reasons. Come on, Brother This is a living sacrifice. Now go ahead and laugh. I built this altar to hold me up. <laughs> this is giving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. You put yourself on the altar. That's right. Yeah. So, Lord, here I am. I'm right. Can you use me what time? We ain't got much time left, yeah. Yeah. I said, we ain't got much time left. That's right. And what you're going to do for God, you better do it quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm saying, Brother Gary, that's all I care about. You going to a devil's hell. If you don't care about nobody but yourself, you ain't saved. Because yeah. when right. Jesus comes into you, one of the first things I noticed was I started caring about other people. Yeah. I didn't yeah. care what color they was. Right. Yeah. Immediately, this is true. I started loving other people. That's right. Change me. Yeah. Redeem me. Yeah. I put myself on that altar. I said, God, whatever you want me to do. Yeah. But I won't preach. Uh -oh. I'll never be a preacher. And I ain't never going to act. I did both. You don't tell God what you mean. I knew I went to Africa. Man, you said you were driving just, a pink bus. And you know, I went driving a 65 little pink bus, but it hauled about 60 kids. Yeah. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah, it does. You better say it does. 
Yeah. Arthur sucked it up because he got it. <laughs> hey, folks. Pepto, they call it the Pepto Mobile. <laughs> Where are we today, Hump House? Yeah. Do you have a heavenly father? Yeah. Yeah. This is a bad thing to come. Brother yeah. Gary always saying it. You know why I'm always saying it? Because this bitch is the house. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Brother Gary, I'm not sure. If I have a heavenly father, I don't, I'm not sure if he hears my prayers. Yeah. You know why you ain't sure? Because he ain't. Because yeah, right. when he hears your prayer, they start getting yeah. 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 I know he hears, man. I can just, it's like, now sometimes I pray and feel like, boom, boom, yeah. boom. I say, Lord, search me. What's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. He puts his finger right on that. Yeah. It ain't going to be no. If you, you got the wrong attitude with that man. Yeah. You, you said something you shouldn't have said. I confess that. He'll let you know what you've done. Yes. You know why? Because he wants you to be clean. Yes. You come into his presence. Amen. There ain't one thing will clean you, and that's the blood of Jesus. Amen. God forgive me for that. I plead the blood. Yeah. <laughs> he tore the veil down. That's right. He ripped that veil wide We go right to the fire. We don't have to go no priest. Yeah, that's right. He tore the wall down right. between Jews and Gentiles. Jesus done that. Yeah. Jesus is a wall destroyer. Yeah. Jesus is a chain breaker. Yeah. 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 You hear today you're bound by something. Jesus will break that chain. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Right. Right. The Bible says sick chains. That's right. Yeah. Bam. Broke that. Go ahead, Mr. Tim. Make sure today. Just, you ain't got to have a fancy prayer. Say, God, I'm going to help you. God said, if your mom, your mother, and your daddy forsake you, I'll be out. You don't ever have to worry about our Father forsaking you. Sometimes we put ourselves in places where He just has to turn away. Are you here today? Maybe you've been saved, but you ain't sanctified. Maybe you've been saved, but you ain't full of the Holy Ghost. This is what we have here at the altar here. I built these altars. I built them so people can kneel. Somebody here, God said you forgot me days without me. God said you forgot me days without number. Don't you call me home? Well, you ain't talked to me today. Come on. You have a heavenly father. I wish I could sing that song. We have a heavenly father. He loves you more than you can even talk for him. He just wants to wrap you up like he wrapped them. Prodigal son, you know, the prodigal son, he, he went and played. Brother King, he said, I, I don't want to be in church no more. I'm going to play. He said, uh, I thought I want all my money right now. He went out and played. He went and found himself in a pig pen. He said, The Bible said you came to me to sell. He realized, man, I got it. The Bible said when he got where the Father could barely see him. Father knew who he was. He said he ran and met that prodigal son. Welcome to him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't leave here today, old pal. Don't leave today. Let today be the day. Let today. Be the day you give it all to Jesus. Because you have a heavenly, heavenly Father that sent Jesus for you. He sent His Son for you. 